So let's try to understand how dependency properties or why dependency properties exist. So let's try to uh, take the same example of a visual tree hierarchy. So what we discussed is in WPF we have all controls represented in a hierarchical manner and then whenever you end up writing some sort of controls those controls are uh, maybe let's say two three controls you write down in a hierarchy like window window has a stack panel stack panel has a text box but then internally whenever these controls are represented you will notice these controls are represented as multiple number of controls in a hierarchy so we uh, did understand the other day that there was a window then there was uh, something called border then there was something called add-on decorator then there was something called maybe some other element like stack panel which was our element then there was something called border maybe again and some more controls after this and then finally what we had was after this entire hierarchy so after all these controls one after another somewhere at the 10 15th level there was this text box so whenever you try to set up the value of a text box even if it is programmatically by simply setting text box one dot text so behind the scene you will understand text box is just a class object so if i just highlight this text box for you and me it was just a text box class object behind the scene so i'll end up writing here text box it is let's say txt name equal to new text box so this is how it got initialized automatically using the window one dot g dot cs file so if you see putting the text box in a tag format and versus putting the text box in so called uh, in object format it's one and the same thing so what happens is these two are equal things that you will see so now what we have to understand is when you set up text boxes text property or whether it is through binding or whether it is through program what is it that happens is there is this guy called as wpf runtime which we try to understand so this area is under the control of wpf runtime right and this WPF runtime, whether it is through binding or whether it is through code, it will always have to look for the bound control in this entire hierarchy, which means WPF runtime will have to go through this entire hierarchy and find out where exactly this maybe so and so properties from the uh, data source is bound with, and then it will have to go and maybe try to change the respective control based on the need but then if you understand it well the hierarchy is not that simple it actually will have to go through this entire hierarchy so what you write is logical tree what it interprets it's something called as visual tree it's not that easy to go through entire hierarchy and this is exactly wpf runtime will have to pay the uh, what we call it as price so are you trying to set the value of a text boxes text or are you trying to read the value of text boxes text so point to understand is whenever you have to read the value of text boxes text you will see text boxes text you when you read wpf runtime need not go through this entire hierarchy but however when you have to write it wpf runtime will have to navigate through this entire hierarchy okay how it is different so here we go what we have to understand in this case is by default WPF uh, every control whether it is text box whether it is stack panel whether it is uh, maybe button every control has got something called as dependency properties so what dependency properties means is every control by default inherits from something called as dependency object and then dependency object that we know ultimately maintains or is responsible for maintaining one static collection ultimately it's a global collection and which is going to be a collection of some key and value pair and ultimately it will also have information regarding 
something called as who is the source of so and so property so things to understand is there is going to be one static collection which is going to get maintained automatically and that static collection that we have is going to hold certain values now which values will it hold again one more time in order to let's say text box has some text property so you will find out this collection that we are talking about will have something like there is txt name considering txt name is object there is something which is with respect to txt name there is something which is called as text property and which has got current value let's say mahesh so this key value pair collection is maintained in the static collection now let's take another example imagine a scene there is something called as another property of maybe text box so let's say there is a width property that we have which is owned by txt name kind of a box itself which means same text box then this text box name width property is set to let's say 200 as in value right now which is ultimately a double value so you will find out this kind of a collection with respect to almost every control is going to get maintained in one static collection which is called as dependency properties collection now what is the use of having this kind of a collection internally so you will find out this every property of the text box will not be part of this collection only the properties which you and me or developers read very often these properties are going to get maintained in this collection so point to note here is here normally every other property need not be part of this collection so every property is no, every property of every control is not part of this collection only the ones which you read very often you read very often are part of this particular collection so i would mention here so just to ensure uh, what we typed here is correct every property of every control is not going to be part of this collection only the ones you read very often are going to be part of this collection so for example text boxes text property you read very often maybe width height uh, for every control you read very often feel colors these properties you read very often so you will find out these properties are part of this particular collection all the time okay what about other properties other properties can be there for example caption other properties can be there at this controls level itself which means the object itself is going to be maintained locally those values does that mean the text property is not maintained by text box no it's like text box is going to maintain that value as well which means text box internally will definitely have something like text property which is internally holding mahesh as in value you will find out it will have it anyway then at the same time there is going to be something like maybe one more property will pick up let's say some other property like for example some other property maybe uh, i'll take an example of caption let's say so caption with some sort of let's say blank value or so by default certain controls are going to maintain these values anyway so your text box has got these values and a replica of this text is going to get maintained in the static collection so just to ensure we understand it well a replica of this control text property is going to be part of this particular collection so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw here one more time so there is a replica which is going to get maintained here so one more time i mention here it's a replica of property or prp or in general replica okay so what we have here there is a replica of this text uh, uh, equal to mahesh again please be assured or please be uh, uh, make a note of this that is right now we are talking about replica of a text only every other properties replica is not going to get maintained in the dependency object static collection that is dependency property static collection again why are we doing this so 
If at all, you are going to read certain properties very often, WPF need not go and try to read the content from the hierarchy. So let's not waste that much of resources. But then if you really want to read it quickly, then normally WPF runtime will read this data from so-called the static collection. What about writing the value? For writing the value, WPF runtime will by default go through the hierarchy, will set up these values and then it will also change the value inside the static collection as well. Which means it's a tedious job when it comes to writing, but then it's easy job when it comes to reading. And then how exactly this collection is going to get maintained? This collection is automatically maintained for all those properties in case of WPF controls, which are dependency properties. So does that mean this particular, like some time back when we had to set up dependency property, we had to inherit our EMP class from the dependency object. Does that mean that every control ultimately comes from something called as dependency object to maintain the static collection? Of course, every WPF control comes from dependency object. And then ultimately, this is going to be one of the super base specifically for WPF controls. And that's the reason readable properties or common readable properties are going to be part of this dependency properties collection. So dependency object or dependency properties play a very vital role if you have a control uh, being created. It doesn't have any value specifically for an employee kind of a class or employee kind of a collection. So here what will happen if at all I have an employee class. So sometime back when I created employee class and employee class we created two dependency properties if you recall. So we created a property called as name and we created a property called as age. When we inherited this class from something called as dependency object you will find out ultimately what we tried to do was we tried to maintain here or we tried to ask uh, the runtime that is I would like to have the kind of these two properties inside this static collection and then which is very very wrong because reading these properties is faster now because I'm reading it from the collection but then do I really need it ultimately EMP class is not any kind of you can say so called control class so here these two things are not at all equal which means your text box and so called your EMP class they are not equal at all so this particular portion that we know the text box and then the EMP class maybe I should draw here so what I was saying was these two things are not same text box is a class but then text box ultimately is used for the representation into the UI and then EMP class is not at all part of the UI at all so reading and writing of the name and age can be done directly into the employee class why are we maintaining the data which is name and age as a replica in case of dependency object collection because reading and writing since can be done directly what is the point in going to the controls hierarchy or like you know maintaining a replica ultimately it's going to be a burden over memory which means there will be a larger a footprint if at all we start using dependency object and dependency properties very often simply for our data source classes so keep it in mind if you are constructing some sort of control by yourself in that case maybe having something which is called as if you are constructing control like this or if you are creating a class which is going to be a control class like text box so when you create a custom controls at that time inheriting from dependency object and maintaining this collection is going to play a very vital part but then not for data source classes at all so keep it in mind dependency properties are going to be very 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 what we call it as uh, difficult if at all we go and take those properties inside the data source classes so let's not use it at all let's continue using i notify property change when we have to ensure that there is a automatic ui change when there is a source change which happens